come now, then you already know the tea. I very much dislike Ray's and Comsac Pocket. And I know this is going to be a little bit controversial because they are some very popular platforms, but I'm going to be telling you exactly why I don't like them and who you should look for instead. First up, let's have a look at Ray's. So this is a super popular one that a lot of people recommend. Raise has a minimum $5 deposit. It means that you can start with just as little as $5. They also have a feature which in theory sounds really cool. It's called a roundup feature. So basically every time you spend $3.50 on a cup of coffee, the extra 50 cents gets invested. The idea behind it is that you are investing on a daily basis with money that you might not have really even realized. Because when you pay $3.50 for a coffee, in your head you go, well, I, like I've just paid $4 for a coffee. So it means that you've paid $3.50 and then you're investing the extra 50 cents. So it's a really good way to kind of get started with investing. It's definitely good for embedding habits. The issue I have with this, with Ray's in particular, is that because of their $5 minimum deposit, every time it does these roundups, it doesn't take that 50 cents out of your account straight away. So it waits until all of your roundups add up to $5. So this might take you a few days or it might take you a week or so to get to that $5. If you're anything like me and manage your money the way I do, that system just completely falls on its face. I am very aware of how much money I have in my bank account and I don't want to have to constantly do the maths. So I want to be able to open my bank account and go, I have $50 in there, that's how much I have to spend. But if Raise is doing this thing in the background, I could actually only have $45. And then that means that I might accidentally spend the whole 50 and then Raise wouldn't be able to invest that $5, which means that then I wouldn't be investing and the whole situation just collapses. So I really like the sentiment behind it, but I just feel that the way it operates isn't quite practical. It might work if you're someone who isn't super aware of how much money you have and you don't check your account that often, that might work for you. But if you're anything like me, that roundup system just wouldn't work because the money doesn't come out of your account straight away. The roundup feature is not the only way that you can invest though. You can set up recurring investments as well or just do one-off lump sum investments. When you set up the recurring investments, they are automatically withdrawn from your account. So you could say, okay, I want it to recur every fortnight when I get paid. It's all on autopilot. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to manually transfer and remind yourself. They also have a cool reward system which is just like shop back rewards. So if you're already shopping online, that's really cool. If you like the idea of cash back rewards but you decide not to go with Raise, I do have an affiliate link for shop back in my description and that will give you a free $10. Feel free to use that if you don't want to go with Raise. On that note though, just remember that shop back, cash back, all of these rewards programs are only good if you're going to buy the item anyway. So don't use it as justification to buy the item. It's kind of the same justification as like, it's on sale, I have to buy it. You don't have to, only use it if you're going to buy the item anyway. Raise gives you seven different ETF portfolios that you can invest into. Each portfolio has its own set of fees associated with it. So when you're comparing the fees, make sure that you look at the portfolios you decide to go with and not just the overall brokerage. As we talked about, it's important to look at who owns your shares. Raise operates on a custodian model. Your shares will be held by a custodian. The custodian for Raise is Perpetual Corporate Trust. This particular custodian has provided custodian services since 1980. Basically, if Raise ceased to exist, the custodian would sell your shares and return the money to you. Raise charges $3.50 per month or $4.50 a month for a custom built portfolio. $3.50 per month is quite high considering the point of micro investing is to invest small amounts at a time. On top of the $3.50 a month fee, there are also account management fees, which are at 0.2%. So if you had $1,000 in raise, you'd be paying $42 a year just in maintenance fees. So it might not seem like the fees are very high, but at the end of the day, if you only have $1,000 invested and you're paying all up $44.31, that's a pretty big fee that you could have invested. So there are six different portfolios with Raise and generally speaking, they will have a different percentage of Australian large cap stocks, Asian, European, US large caps 
stocks, Australian government bonds, Australian corporate bonds, and one of the portfolios has a small percentage of Bitcoin as well. So depending on which portfolio you choose, they will be weighted differently. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the way that it's weighted. Being young and having a high risk tolerance, I personally wouldn't opt to invest in government or corporate bonds. And I would definitely want to be looking more at the US market and the global market before looking at the Australian market. So for me, none of these portfolios really weight it the way that I would like to do it. And I'm definitely not willing to pay a extra dollar per month for a custom portfolio. Another thing that you might want to consider when looking at these micro investing platforms is how have their portfolios performed previously. Yes, previous performance is not an indicator of future performance, but it is good to get an idea of how they have actually performed. I had to really do some digging to find this, and a little bit of advice is if you Google specifically what you're looking for, rather than like navigating their website, you're gonna have more luck. Razor's returns were okay in the last two years. Not amazing, but better than a bank account. But what I wanna draw your attention to here is that for some of the portfolios, their performance were in the negatives for a single year. But that is the nature of investing. In the short term, your portfolio will go down and over the long term, it will trend upwards. But for anyone who had invested those portfolios for the short term and needed that money next year, they will have lost their money. So please, 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 please do not invest any money that you need for the short term. My overall opinion of Raise is the fees just outweigh any of the benefits and cool features that Raise offer. Yes, the Roundup feature is cool, it's gimmicky, it encourages people to start investing with as little as they can as soon as they can, and it's easy to start a habit of investing. So from that perspective, it's great and I really like it. But as I explained before, with the whole way that the Roundup feature works, it takes too much brain power for me to work out how much money I actually have to spend, so that defeats the whole purpose of the Roundup feature in the first place. I like the rewards program, but I am more than happy to forego that, use my own shop back rewards and not have to pay the fees. So to be completely honest with you, Raise just doesn't make the cut for me. It is not a platform that I would choose to invest with, but you don't need to listen to me. And if you love the idea of Raise and you don't mind paying mountains of fees, then go ahead. And I have an affiliate link in the description that will give you $5 to kickstart your investing journey if you decide to go with them. But again, personally, not where I would choose to invest my money. Next up is Comsec Pocket, one of the most promoted platforms. <sighs> I might need another drink for this one. So Comsec Pocket is obviously a part of Combank. I'm already completely biased against it, but... To be positive, let's have a look at the pros. Firstly, it is chess sponsored, which is awesome because Combank is such a big bank. They're able to go through all of the hassle of securing HIN numbers for each individual micro investor. That's definitely a huge plus. They have seven different portfolio options and they're based on themes. So with the benefits out of the way, let's go into the cons. First off, their minimum trade is $50. Is that even micro investing? Not sure. Secondly, they charge $2 per trade unless you're trading more than $1,000. $2 per trade. I can't. This is when you buy and sell your shares. So when you buy in using Comsec Pocket and then when you want to withdraw your money, you're paying $2 per trade. So then obviously the higher amount of money that you put in at a time, the fee will be a lower percentage of this money. But that's the whole point of microinvest. That you don't have to wait and save up a lot of money to then invest and that you can invest with small amounts at a time. It really just starts to negate the whole purpose of using Comsec Pocket in the first place. Additionally, as if you need any more reasons not to invest with Comsec Pocket, in order to trade with Comsec Pocket, you need to have a Commonwealth transaction bank account. Now, Combank's everyday account comes with a $4 monthly fee. This $4 fee can be avoided if you deposit $2,000 into your account each month if you're under 25 or a full-time student. But if you're not getting that sort of money coming into that account, or you're only gonna be opening that transaction account to support your Comsec Pocket account, then the fees will add up to $48 a year and basically eat up the value of a single $50 trade. But honestly, I wouldn't even waste my time. I wouldn't go there. You can do what you want, but me personally, no. It's a big no for me. <sighs> 
their marketing. It's just so strong. The next option is First Step. Now this is an option that is relatively new and like Raise, they provide that roundup feature. Their fees are significantly lower than Raise with $1.25 per month if you have under $5,500 invested with them. Over $5,500 is 0.27% of your portfolio. Just be aware that if you choose to do a direct debit system, then it will be $1.95 per month. So on top of the monthly fees, there are what they call the usual fees. And this is fixed at 0.2% of the value of your portfolio at the end of the year. So if your First Step account was at $500 for the year, then you'd pay a dollar. First Step also uses a custodian model and their custodian is Australian Executor Trustees. This is a professional custodian which is completely independent of First Step. Apparently, it's one of Australia's oldest and largest trustee companies, providing custodian services for over 130 years. So look, again, I wouldn't be using First Step because they have those fees but they are definitely significantly lower than Raise and they do have that roundup feature. So that could be an option if you were looking specifically for the roundup feature. Another option that you might want to look at is called Sharesies. So Sharesies operates kind of differently to the other platforms. They've taken more of a fractional shares approach. So instead of having preset portfolios, they allow you to invest in individual ETFs and shares with as little or as much as you like. So really Sharesies is more of like a stake ETF scenario but for the Australian market. Jersey's also offers trading in the US and in New Zealand. But before you get too excited, they do have a brokerage fee of 0.5% for up to $3,000 and 0.1% for over $3,000. So instead of having a monthly account fee, they will charge per trade more like Comsec Pocket. So for example, if you place a $5 trade, you'd pay a fee of 2.5 cents. Now compare that to the $2 trade with Comsec Pocket or the monthly $3.50 account fee with Raise, then this brokerage fee is looking pretty reasonable. However, it's not quite zero and that's what I'm looking for. A cool thing about Sharesies is that you don't have to invest in the preset portfolios. You can pick your own ETFs and you can even invest in individual shares. Just be aware that if you do opt to trade on an international market with Sharesies, there will be a foreign exchange fee or an FX fee. You'll be charged a 0.4% currency exchange fee and 0.4% is pretty good. However, as there is also a brokerage fee, you'd be better off trading with a platform that does zero brokerage and has a slightly higher FX fee like eToro Stake or Superhero. Sharesies also uses a custodian model and so when you purchase shares via Sharesies, they are held for you by a New Zealand company called Sharesies Nominee Limited. So as explained before, you'll be the beneficial owner of the shares whilst Sharesies Nominee Limited operates on a different system. They are still a company that is tied to the broker. Brokerage. And so for me personally, I see that as a little bit more of a risk. Now I have reached out to the Sharesies team and so I'm just waiting for them to get back to me with a little bit more details about how insurance and what their system is in case Sharesies does collapse. So when they get back to me, I'll pop it down in the comments for you to see. But until I know more about the insurance and the whole system they have in place, I just wouldn't feel comfortable putting my money there. Okay, four down and not a single one I'm happy to invest with. Let's see if Spaceship passes the test. Spaceship has no minimum deposit, none at all. And it is completely free for you to trade through Spaceship for up to $5,000. Over $5,000 and you get charged an annual fee of 0.5% or 0.1% depending on the portfolio that you choose. So finally we found our brokerage free micro investing platform that I've been hoping for. Spaceship doesn't have the roundup feature but they do allow you to set up automatic recurring they have three different portfolios for you to choose from and you can also invest in multiple portfolios. So you don't just have to pick one, you could invest in two or all three. Spaceship does, however, operate on a custodian model, so it is not just sponsored. They are regulated by ASIC and operate under their own financial license. The only odd thing is that Spaceship did not mention anywhere on their website who their custodian is and I had to reach out to the customer service team to find out who their custodian is. So I've done some digging and it looks like interactive brokers are the custodians for Spaceship. I reached out to the customer service team and they informed me that in the case of a collapse, your investments would be sold and your money returned to you. I'm yet to find out if Interactive Brokers has any sort of insurance policy on the funds. I will also comment that below if I manage to find out. So the pros of Spaceship. 
completely free after $5,000, which is awesome. It seems like their portfolios have been getting pretty consistent returns, which is great. However, keep in mind, they've only been operating for a few years. It was super easy to set up and they have that automated recurring payment feature, which allows you to just automate your investments. The cons, you can't customize any of your portfolios. And of course, they're not just sponsored. Due to the absence of fees for under $5,000, I have myself signed up for Spaceship and I'm giving it a trial. Now, when I signed up, it took me forever to find a referral code because the referral codes change each month. So every time I found a YouTuber or a blog that had a referral code, it had expired. It took me so long to find a working referral code. So I ended up having to sit on live chat with the customer service for about half an hour before I managed to get a referral code. So if you want $5 to put towards your investing journey through Spaceship, just know that I will update my referral code every single month so that you can have one that actually works. If it's not working for whatever reason, just shoot me a DM on Instagram and I will respond to you with the working referral code immediately. So you don't have to sit on live chat for like half an hour because that was a pain, but still free money, so yay. So all in all, micro-investing is a really great way to get started with investing. It allows you to build those habits that are so crucial in winning with money. Micro-investing is based on the principle that you should always invest as much as you can, whenever you can, no no matter how little it is. And even the smallest amounts can lead to a large amount over time. However, for the fees that are charged with Raise, Comsafe Pocket, First Step, and Sharesies, if you wanted to just straight up invest small amounts of money into preset diversified portfolios, you can do it all for free through Spaceship. If you want to invest in a particular ETF or particular share, you can do this for free through Stake and eToro. But this is all just my opinion and not financial advice. Don't forget to like the video and we'll see you in the next one.